DaVinci Resolve 20 is finally here. In its public beta form, I've got it downloaded on my PC and I'm gonna be taking a look at the top 10 features that I believe are the biggest things that will help me and possibly help you. My name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. So with the intro all out of the way, I'm going to just start by saying I'm not going to be covering everything. There is a lot more. Now these are the top biggest features for me. And I'm a YouTube content creator. I do a lot of work over on another channel called GeekWatt. And these are the features that have been added into DaVinci Resolve 20 that I think are going to affect me the most with my workflow. All right then, so number one. And I wanted to start off with a big one. It's also a small one. I'll explain. I guess it's time to start. So here I have my logo just animating to the side like this. Nothing new, nothing different, right? But you'll notice up here, we have keyframes. If you click on keyframes, we have this, a keyframe editor, at least a better one. There was one in the last one, but a keyframe editor in the edit page, like a dedicated panel. Why this has taken so long for Blackmagic and DaVinci Resolve to add this, I don't know. Maybe they needed AI to do it. But to be serious for one second, something I struggle to do. As you can see, I've made two simple keyframes just for the sake of this tutorial. And what we can do here is we can see those keyframes right here. And what's really, really cool is you can zoom this in so that you can separate this panel and have it wherever you want. So if you have a secondary display and you want to put this on the secondary display, you can. And what's brilliant though is while just like Fusion, you can select the keyframes and you can add an ease in and an ease out. This is still very rough. I think there's a lot that can be improved about this. Why? on earth this isn't in the same style as Fusion in terms of the keyframe editor there. I don't know, but that's not me complaining. They've added it. Number two is something called Show Music Beats. Now this is something that I didn't know I needed. It's not necessarily breaking new grounds. We have some music here, right? So let's just take a quick listen. If we just right click on this and go to show music beats right at the bottom, like that, that was real time. I did not speed that up, I promise. We can see right here the beats. Now what's fantastic about these is that you can actually use your magnet tool to snap items in the timeline to these beats. So if I took my logo here and I wanted it to snap in on that beat, there you go. Now number three scares me. I can't say much more than that. <laughs> DaVinci Resolve call this AI voice training. I just call it fear. What DaVinci Resolve AI voice training actually is, is the ability to take one piece of audio, let's say a big file of just someone talking and train an AI model on that voice. And then what you can do is get your own voice and change it into that voice. Wild. You're a wild man. <laughs> So I've got Rosie, my girlfriend, my partner, to basically record six minutes of audio of her just talking. So let's just take a quick listen. Welcome, New Hive City graduating class of 915. Welcome, New Hive City graduating class of 915. Now she did just read the entire script for the B movie for this. Thank you for doing that. I have the raw clip here in my media pool. If you right click on it, you'll see this new little section here called AI tools. If you go down, you'll see DaVinci Resolve AI voice training. Now, once that you've read through the legal rights and issues with the world, just click accept. So I'm gonna call this Rosie because it is, and then click start. Once the AI voice training has finished, and this did take a little while, what you can do is find the audio in your timeline that you want to, you know, change, right click on it and go over to voice convert. Here a little panel will come up with your presets. You know, you can change your voice. So here's some audio examples right now of my voice being completely changed into something completely different. I have absolutely no idea what my voice might sound like in this clip. I might sound a bit robotic, a bit AI or a little bit strange, who actually knows? Now, DaVinci Resolve have added AI animated subtitles. Hooray. As you can see on my screen, these are just the sort of default kind of things that they give you. It's getting there. Really exciting to see. So in effects, in titles, go down to subtitles here and you'll see animated. So now let's drag word highlight over to subtitle one. Basically, this will just apply that effect to the subtitle track. I'm sure with time, DaVinci Resolve will fix this. It's not entirely clear that the effect has been applied to this track, but that's all right. Little feature, we're in beta still. In the Inspector tab, it's very clear that an effect has been added and you can customize these to your heart's content. Now, if we play that. 
you put your foot down with this little three cylinder engine and you can actually have quite a lot of fun. Now I haven't actually changed the subtitle so this is literally how it comes out of the box. Very impressive, really exciting, I'm sure there's a lot more to come here. Number five is the Magic Mask, specifically the Magic Mask 2, like the second version, like it wasn't already good enough. So if we go into the colour tab here, what we can do is the Magic Mask is always just there and you can, interestingly enough, use the old version of the Magic Mask if you want. Don't know why you'd want that. You want to use the best one. Now I'm going to be honest here, I've really, really struggled to actually guess an example of the Magic Mask 2 working on my PC. For some reason it really, really struggles. But from my actual understanding from this so far, basically DaVinci Resolve have added more AI integrated intelligence into the Magic Mask, along with the fantastic feature of being able to edit the mask afterwards. So if you don't like a particular flicker or a particular layout that the mask has just automatically gone to, you can actually edit that and change that. And a very small one, but I think it's a big one, is this little button in the top left corner of your timeline. This guy wasn't there before. If you click it, I'm sure you guys can figure out what that is. It's a integrated record voiceover button in the edit page. To me, this is huge. I have always struggled when it comes to just needing to record a little voiceover into my videos. It's there now and it's very, very simple. You can just change the inputs right here. You know, if you have various different inputs into your PC, you can do that and you can also change to a particular track as well, you know, for whatever track you want it to record to. It is brilliant that this has finally been added. So if you go up to Timeline, click on AI Tools, and you'll have something called Audio Assistant. This little tab will come up and you can select various different presets. I'm sure eventually you'll be able to put your own custom presets, but for now, this is what we've got. And you can click Audio Mix here. What this is basically going to do is optimize the audio throughout your project or your timeline, and basically optimize the audio so it's just perfect for, for example, right here, YouTube. This is going to help an awful lot of people who don't have a lot of time, but need to get a project out quick. They can just skip a massive step when it comes to audio mixing. That is just fantastic. I'm gonna leave an example of this on your screen now so that you guys can just take a real look at this. My name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. My name's Dan and you're watching Dan Vinci. It's time to move on now. This next one, for someone who makes online social media content, this is huge. Basically, they've added vertical viewing in the preview tab in the very far corner right here. If you click this button while you've got a video which is in portrait, you've got to make, that's the important bit, just make sure it is, you know, portrait. It will then change your layout to this. And I, I'm so happy that they've done this. Kind of a huge feature and a small feature at the same time. Well, what's next, Johnny? Font filters. Yes. Basically, if you didn't know, in the old versions of DaVinci Resolve, you couldn't filter the fonts, so you just got everything. And if you had hundreds of thousands of fonts, you would have, when you click the drop down button, hundreds of thousands of fonts. But now you can filter it and just have three if you want three. So if you go into the top left corner, go down to preferences, then under user and go over to editing, you'll have a text section here, which is brand new. So if you click on display only specific fonts, you can then create a folder with just the fonts that you like and just click browse and select that folder and you're done. You don't have the clutter of hundreds of thousands of fonts destroying your mind when you're just trying to find the right font. But otherwise guys, that is the end of the video. Obviously I haven't covered everything, you know, I can't physically because there's an awful lot there. But these are the biggest ones that really stood out to me when I just first loaded up DaVinci Resolve. We're so, so close to 20,000. If just some of you could subscribe, then Dan Vinci will be bigger than these countries on screen. We will have conquered these countries. I'm sure there's something that I don't know. I'm still, I'm still learning. There's just, st there's so much here and I'm really excited for this to, you know, become more stable because just filming this video, I had about five or six crashes, but that's fine it's a public beta i'll give them a break there but yeah my name's dan you've watched dan Vinci, and i'll see you in the next one